Hi everyone, this is Tevi live from Room 114. Uh, we are going on to the Civil Rights Movement uh, Begins, which is part two of our screencast. So follow your guided notes um, under number one, guys, the spark. Um, and so you just want to put down, you know, what that spark was. You know, Rosa Parks, you know, was arrested for uh, refusing to give up her seat on a bus to a white man. So, you know, this small act of courage. Um, really started a chain reaction. So what happened guys next is the Women's Political Council um, which was led by Jo Ann Robinson um, she called on African Americans to boycott Montgomery's buses on the day that Rosa Parks appeared in court. Um, so guys this marked a new era in this movement so instead of limiting their fight um, for their rights to court cases African Americans began organizing protests defying laws, um, and demanding that they be treated equal to whites. So what was the significance of the Montgomery bus boycott? So it started in 1955, and um, African Americans formed what's called the Montgomery Improvement Association, and they did that to run the boycott and to negotiate with city leaders for an end to segregation. Um, they elected 26-year-old pastor named Martin Luther King Jr. to lead them. Um, their meetings were held at his church, which was guys fill in, was called the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. Um, and there he spoke, you know, for the first time very eloquently, and you can fill in, you know, with charisma, you know, which just means with real passion and fervor. Um, cautioning them, though, to keep their protest peaceful. Um, we will listen to his speech uh, tomorrow in class. Um, but you guys should know that King um, had earned his Ph.D. in theology from Boston University. You know, sadly not my alma mater, Boston College, but that's okay. But there, guys, is where he learned his principles that the only moral way to end segregation and racism was through nonviolent, passive resistance. So fill that in as his, as his moral way. Um, so you guys, that should sound a little familiar. He was heavily influenced by the teachings of Gandhi, um, who had used these methods um, to, you know, really bring down British rule in India um, peacefully. Um, so he really believed that um, people could transform themselves. And um, so this slide kind of goes along with this number two, guys. African Americans were motivated by King. You know, he really led them to boycott these buses, guys, put down for over a year. Um, and so they organized carpools and they walked instead of taking the segregated buses. Um, so over this time, guys, Rose's case worked its way to the Supreme Court. And so by November of 1956, um, the Supreme Court did um, rule that Al Alabama's you know, laws for segregation on buses was unconstitutional. And here's a great picture of Martin Luther King Jr. during one of his speeches. Um, really shows some of his um, leadership and charisma I was, I was mentioning before. So guys, the boycott in Montgomery could not have been successful um, without the support of the African American churches in that city. Um, so guys, fill in that they served really as forums or centers for many of the protests to plan meetings um, and to organize the volunteers for uh, specific campaigns like to, you know, register people to vote. So after the success of the Montgomery bus boycott, guys, African American ministers led by King established the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, or SCLC. Um, so its goals were to eliminate segregation and to encourage African Americans to register to vote. Um, you know, as SCLC's first president, King led protests um, against segregation in many areas like voting booths, transportation, housing, and all other public accommodations. All right, so guys, turn over to the other side on, on number four. And what was Eisenhower's mixed response to civil rights? So guys, you can put down that um, Eisenhower sympathized with the civil rights movement. He even desegregated um, veterans, hospitals, and Navy shipyards. Um, but, you guys, he did believe racism and segregation would um, gradually, you know, um, end um, and that we did not need to have protests and, you know, challenge the courts. Um, you know, he was busy with the Cold War and he wanted to keep the nation united at this time. Um, he was even against, guys, Brown versus Board of Ed. 
Um, so it kind of shows his mixed response here. But he did believe in upholding, guys, the authority of the federal government. So he became the first president since Reconstruction to actually send federal troops to the South to enforce um, civil rights. So publicly against, um, but he does stand up to Governor Faubus, which we'll see in just a moment, setting feder sending federal troops to enforce desegregation at Central High School in Arkansas. So let's finish up with this crisis in Little Rock, Arkansas. So guys, in September of 1957, um, the school board in Little Rock won a court order requiring um, that nine African-American students be allowed to go to Central High, which was a school with 2,000 white students. So the governor, guys, his name is Orville Phobos, um, you know, uh, was pretty known for being um, moderate on racial issues, but he also wanted to get reelected. So um, he began a, a campaign for his reelection as a defender of white supremacy. He ordered, guys, the Arkansas National Guard um, to prevent the nine students from entering the school. They blocked their entrance. Um, guys, this was the first state challenge to the Constitution since the Civil War. He even allowed the mob to, um, you know, really kind of take over and destroy the school's windows um, and beating up some of the reporters. So um, he basically was giving in to the mob scene. Here's a picture, picture sorry guys, of Governor Orville Fulbus. Um, so once again, remember, he allowed the mob to kind of take over. Um, this convinced guys, Eisenhower, to actually send um, the 101st Airborne Division. Um, so, you know, federal troops encircling the school with bayonets ready. Um, and they are the ones that actually escort the students into the school. Um, guys, the troops had to stay for the whole school year, right, because of the intense um, hatred and harassment that these students suffered. And even, guys, the next year, um, you know, Phobos uh, closed the three other public high schools in order to just sidestep around the desegregation issue. So um, he was um, definitely a thorn in the side of the civil rights movement. I am going to show you guys footage of the Little Rock Nine um, in this great documentary called Eyes on the Prize. So um, this is Tevi signing off. I uh, hope you guys all do your homework tomorrow and that we can talk about this um, unique time in history. Good night, everybody.